In our previous videos, we already talked about energy transfer through an ecosystem, how energy is lost and it cannot be replaced. And now we're going to take a closer look at where that energy actually goes. And I've drawn a little diagram here, little skull and bones, some hair growing out of it, and a little bit of a leaf that's hanging out next to here to try to help you visualize and remember at least three different places where the energy actually disappears to. So we're going to look at this in a little bit more closely. So here's an example of an energy period and these are the different trophic levels that we saw in previous videos. The producers have the most amount of energy that they're able to capture and remember the ballpark is about 10% of the energy that's available at each trophic level can go up to the next. That's a good way to calculate it. It's not exact over here with these actual numbers um, of kilojoules per meter squared per year but 10% is a good approximation and that's what you should be using when you're trying to estimate the amount of energy available in each subsequent trophic level as we go up here so where does the energy go if only 10% of it gets here that means 90% of it disappears it's like a really poorly designed vehicle or car where gasoline gets burned off but only 10% of it is actually used to make the car do anything and the other 90% gets lost. Well, you probably have heard of heat loss as one of the main sources but we want to be a little bit more specific because some of that energy is actually used for good things, it just doesn't make it to the next level. So some organisms actually die before they're eaten, hence the skull and crossbones here. If they die before they are eaten, well, they don't make it up into the next kind of trophic level there. That energy can be transferred to bacteria or other types of kind of decomposers. But because they die before they're actually eaten, that energy doesn't go to the next trophic level. Some parts of organisms are not actually eaten. So here our skull and crossbones are good to help us understand because we know that when things die, most of their meat can be eaten by some scary animals, but a lot of the bones get left over. But that original animal used energy to actually create those bones. So because those parts are not eaten, like the bones, or hair, for example, that energy that's stored in there doesn't go to the next level as well too. So that's kind of easy to understand. Bones, hairs, yucky stuff, things that you tend to avoid when you're eating as well too. Some parts of organisms are just not digestible. So for example, for us, when I eat my plants, we know that eating vegetables is good for us. There's carbs in there, but a lot of the plant tissue, like the cellulose in the plant cell walls, we can't actually digest. So I know that cellulose is actually made up of glucose molecules, but my body cannot access that glucose because I don't have enzymes that help me to actually break down the way that glucose is stored in terms of cellulose. So I actually end up pooping all that stuff out and that makes up what fiber is. So because I don't get to access the energy in there, that's stuff that I'm not actually taking with me into my trophic level when I'm eating those plants. So a lot of that stuff is not digestible, hence this little skull and crossbones guy holding a little plant here as well too. So plant cell well cellulose for us gets egested, which means pooped out, not digested. We ingest it, we can't digest it, and then it actually gets egested. So detritivores and sapotrophs, which are types of decomposers, which we've talked about in previous videos as well, take care of recycling a lot of the undigested and dead stuff. Finally, cell respiration is a big source of energy loss. This is the one that you probably knew before. Cell respiration is a big source of energy loss in an ecosystem. Much energy intended for active processes is lost as heat. We cannot get that back. And this is a good point to emphasize that energy in an ecosystem definitely gets lost. But compare that with nutrients. I can write that really fast with my mouse here. Nutrients get recycled. So nutrients are recycled. This is a very important point. You can write a whole essay on this and you might even get a question which is about comparing nutrients and energy in an ecosystem. Energy gets lost. Here are a bunch of the reasons why. But nutrients are recycled and you can talk about the carbon cycle in there perfectly to try to understand that. Okay. So a few things, oh, this I've just already talked about it. Nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus are recycled, but energy is lost and needs to get replaced. So where do we get that energy replaced from? This happy camper right up here, which is our big fat 
sun so we're really excited about that so heat energy in ecosystems this is something we have to understand just a really quick little side point but understand this in detail as well too living organisms cannot convert heat energy into other forms if this is you Yes, you feel warm, but you can't actually use that heat energy and convert it into another type of energy. Plants can take the light energy, not the heat energy. When these leaves are actually taking energy from the sun, they're using light energy. It's those wavelengths of light that are being absorbed by the pigments in here, the chlorophyll. That's not actually the heat energy. But living things can do the following. We can convert light to chemical energy. So that's what plants do. That's what's going on right here. They can convert light to chemical energy. That's like converting light into glucose. That's what photosynthesis is doing. I'll just put a little uh, P right here for photosynthesis. We can convert chemical to kinetic. So when I eat this stuff and it goes into my belly, I can use this chemical energy in the glucose to actually power things like metabolic processes and my brain as well. We can convert chemical energy to electrical energy. That electrical energy can be transmitted through our nervous system. We can also convert chemical to heat energy. So obviously when I eat, I can use that glucose and the fats and the proteins when I need to and it helps keep my body temperature um, at around 37 degrees which is how we maintain our internal homeostasis in terms of body temperature so got to keep yourself active when you're watching these videos you can't just sit there and listen and then turn it into osmosis you got to do something with it now so before you shut this video off like pause the video right here and then try to answer this question doesn't matter if you're stumbling or you're stuttering or you can't get it out. It's okay. Just try. Talk out loud to yourself. Discuss what happens to energy as we move up trophic levels or through a food chain. If you can't say it immediately right now, then you're unlikely to be able to say it in a week or two weeks from now or a few months from now when the exam comes up. So start right now. Find out where the gaps are and then go back. Check your notes, see if you add anything to your notes, go back to the video, uh, just flip back to the screen to give yourself a reminder, then look away and then try doing it again. You just need some visual cues sometimes. But please be active with this stuff. That's how you're going to actually learn it. All right, good luck.